Residential versus commercial real estate. Five big differences. We all need a place to live, whether it be an apartment that we rent or a house that we own. Chances are you have experienced a residential transaction. In contrast, not everyone needs a commercial space, but if you are a business owner or even decision maker for your company, chances are you will get to be part of a commercial real estate deal. Hi, I'm Nick Zager with Mirla Real Estate Partners. Welcome to our channel. We offer videos covering the basics of commercial real estate. If you are new to our channel, please be sure to like, share, and hit the subscribe button to get notification on all of our videos. In this video, we'll be covering five big differences between commercial and residential transactions. So if you do find yourself ready to take on a commercial real estate transaction, you will be familiar with what to expect and will better understand how a commercial transaction may differ from a residential real estate transaction. Property search. No matter if you are looking to lease or buy, you're going to start with an online search for residential real estate. Sites such as Zillow, Realtor.com, Trulia have become mainstream and user-friendly for anyone to use. Residential realtors have access to tools such as multiple listing services or the MLS, which provides more information on properties. However, it is still easy to do an online search yourself and the majority of available residential properties are going to be listed online, which is why most buyers will start by providing their realtor with a list of properties they would like to see. Well, for commercial real estate, there are not as many resources for business owners, even online. Sites like LoopNet are available to the general public, but not all commercial properties are on there. Like the MLS, commercial agents pay for access to sites where they can access all commercial availabilities. Online tools are indeed helpful for commercial agents. However, commercial agents gain a lot of their market knowledge from their relationships with other agents, tenants, property owners, and landlords. These relationships are not going to be something a typical business owner has access to. If you want to start a search yourself for a commercial transaction, we recommend starting online, but you should also walk or drive the market to get a better sense of what might be available and where other businesses are. This way, you'll at least be familiar with some of the big players out in the commercial world. Now this difference may not seem too big, but I assure you that the rest are in fact much bigger. The people involved. When you purchase a residential property, you'll be working with your realtor, lender, and then likely a property inspector and a title company. In a residential lease transaction, you have even less parties involved, perhaps just the leasing agent or property manager. However, a commercial transaction is going to have more parties involved for sale or a lease. A commercial sale and lease transaction is going to have your commercial agent, lender, architect, general contractor, real estate attorney, equipment representatives, furniture vendors, the list goes on and on. And a sale will go even further involving various inspectors, surveyors, and environmental inspectors, and also the title company. Because commercial spaces require specific build-outs for each business, it is almost impossible to not involve architects and construction vendors, even for a lease. Whereas a residential property doesn't require construction or renovations. The good news is when you hire a commercial agent to represent you, this person will act as the quarterback throughout the entire process and be able to connect you and coordinate with the best people to get the deal done. For more details on the parties involved and how they play a role in commercial real estate transaction, check out our video about building a commercial team. The link is down in the description. Standardization. For a residential lease, the tenant will need to fill out an application, complete some sort of background check and credit check, and then they can ultimately sign the lease. A residential sale is more complex, but the documents required are very standard, including the pre-approval letter from the lender, the seller disclosures, the purchase agreement, and the closing paperwork. For a commercial transaction, there's a typical process for both a lease and a sale, but there are many routes to go about each step depending on your situation. For example, when you make an offer for either a lease or a sale, you may put together a letter of intent or an LOI. This document will outline the important deal points that you as the buyer or tenant would like to propose to the landlord or seller. 
An LOI can be very short and simple with just the basics, such as the purchase price or base rent and length of the term, or it can be incredibly detailed, including items like exclusivity right, right of first refusal, renewal options, signage, parking, and so on. Furthermore, you may not submit an LOI right off the bat either. Perhaps submitting a request for a proposal makes more sense for your situation. An RFP is similar to an LOI. Instead of filling in the deal point blanks, you are asking the seller or landlord to fill the blanks for you first. It's not just the offer stage of the commercial real estate process that can vary either. Depending on the property and if it is a sale or a lease, different phases and documentation may be required, such as zoning, environmental, and surveys. Even among landlords, there is a spectrum of requirements for the construction process, including building standard materials and preferred vendors. When you hire a commercial agent to represent you for either a sale or a lease, they will be able to guide you through the process and make recommendations along the way, which makes things a whole lot easier for you as the business owner or company decision maker. A commercial agent has the expertise to advise you on how to approach each step of the deal and connect you with the best people to help in each situation. Cost. Depending on where you live and the market, a residential transaction can be costly. However, commercial real estate is almost always going to be more costly. In other words, if the cost of living is high in your area, the cost of commercial property is going to be high too. Commercial properties are considered a greater asset than a residential home because whereas a residential property can be used as someone's primary residence, a commercial building is always used as a way to generate income, even if you're planning to use the property for your own business. In fact, if you are an owner-occupant of a property, sometimes a commercial building actually ends up being worth more than the business it's itself. And it's not just commercial sales that cost more. A commercial lease is almost always multiple years long so long that the higher rent a commercial business would pay compared to a person or family when rent is multiplied over numerous years, the value of each lease is much greater too. Number one, time. The amount of time each deal takes may be the biggest difference of all. A residential lease is usually the quickest transaction, often only taking days to complete from start to finish. A residential sale will typically take longer, with an average about a month, month and a half, maybe two months on the long side. However, a commercial real estate transaction will certainly require months to complete, sometimes even over a year. And this is for both leases and sales. A sale transaction will often have a due diligence period for multiple months just to complete the necessary surveys. And as mentioned before, commercial lease is almost always multiple years long, about three to 10 years on average. And therefore, it is going to be worth thousands or even millions of dollars in rent. This means that each deal point is a big decision and a lot of money is at stake. In fact, real estate is almost always going to be a company's second or third highest expense, which has a huge impact on the company's budget with even a lease renewal transaction totaling to tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars it is not surprising that business owners and landlords would take their time when agreeing to terms the amount of time it will take to move in will also take longer for a commercial deal on average again not every residential transaction requires construction but more often than not a commercial transaction does different businesses have different uses and needs so a space will need to be designed accordingly. Even if the layout of a space is perfect, a company is likely going to require new paint and flooring before moving in. It is not uncommon for a tenant to move in many months after a lease is signed. This is also why it is important to plan real estate decisions far in advance. If you are currently renting, I would recommend starting the process of your next deal about 12 months prior to your lease expiration but that can also vary depending on your circumstance. For example, larger companies are going to start the process even earlier than that. Or if your lease has a renewal option, you will want to ensure that you do, do not miss that window of time to make a decision. By contacting a commercial agent early on in the process, when you're first analyzing your situation, you'll be starting your transaction in the best position. As we have stated throughout this video, hiring an expert to represent you in every commercial real estate transaction has many benefits. And most importantly, it doesn't cost you anything. 
which is actually a similarity of residential and commercial real estate. If you are purchasing a commercial property, the seller is going to be responsible for paying the total commission of the deal which gets split between the seller's agent and the buyer's agent. And for a lease deal, the landlord will pay both parties' agents too. Commercial real estate is incredibly complex, and if you aren't an insider, good information can be difficult to come by. In my practice, I am always learning and growing, and I like to diligently serve my clients and provide them with the best tools to make the right decisions for their business's real estate. So if you have any specific questions or comments about anything I've said, feel free to contact me directly by email or phone or leave a comment below. If you found value or liked the video and would like more information about properly navigating the commercial real, real estate world, check out these other videos. And again, I'm Nick Zager with Mirlo Real Estate Partners and I can't wait to connect with you again.